The world is hurting and desperately in need of a savior. Let's take the word of faith and hope to every nation and transform the world. This is the vision and mission of Team International. For more information, contact us at www.teamministriesinternational.com. If you have a good Bible, let's open our Bibles briefly to the book of Hebrews chapter 11. Verse 6 to 7. My message is titled, God Rewards Faith. Hebrews eleven six 6 to 7. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a reward of those who diligently seek him. By faith, no, I've been divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. Let's pray. Father, we just want to thank you for the entrance of your word as God the power to transform our lives and destinies. I pray that as the word comes, let it give your people an inheritance and let it take them to the place that you have ordained them to be and let God's people say, Amen. Faith is a key to fruitfulness. If your life is barren and you're struggling and it's all about one struggle or the other, this is the time for you to have a sober reflection and ask yourself if you're doing the right thing. Because no scientist is going to spend time in the laboratory consistently doing something and getting the same result without taking time out to pause and say, let me see if I know what the hell I'm doing. If your life has been one classical example of doing things consistently and getting the same outcome, and you think that nothing is wrong, Especially when the outcome is negative, then that means something is radically wrong. I want you to know that God can't lie. The Bible is not a gamble. The Bible is the living will of God. It is a proof of God's power. It is a proof of God's greatness. The Bible gives an expression of God's will. The Bible is the totality of God himself, although there is nothing like Bible in the scripture. So, in other words, it is the word of God that gives God's name relevance. That's why God himself said, I magnify my word above my name. Because it is the word of someone that gives relevance to his name. Your name is nothing if your word does not count. Too many Christians are struggling. Too many Christians are living in sickness. Too many Christians are having too many question marks. Sometimes they come to church and they're not even certain if God is going to answer them. Like Elijah, I came with the word of God like fire in my spirit and in my bones to tell you, how long are you going to limp with two different opinions? How long are you going to spend an entire lifetime not being sure whether heaven is real or heaven is not real? How long are you going to spend an entire lifetime whether God asking yourself whether if it's okay for, for God to bless you or not? How come are you going to live your entire life in between? Maybe I'm a, I'm a cursed person. Maybe I'm a blessed person. That's not faith. Faith is consistently consistent. It simply means, I know that everything that God has spoken concerning me will come to pass. I know, despite the storms that I'm seeing, the peace is going to come. I know that my Redeemer leaves. The presence of trials does not signify the absence of faith. Anywhere there is faith, trials abound. Because faith attracts the good, the bad, and the ugly. If you say you believe, 
Thank you for believing. Even the demons believe that believe the name of Jesus and they, they even dramatize it by trembling. Thank you for believing. But go beyond your belief. Go into the realm of conviction. When the entire core of your life and destiny is tied to an idea. The greatest nations in the world existed and were made great by people, men and women, who had a conviction that they had a dream. What dream do you have? It is my dream that keeps me going. It is my dream that keeps me preaching. It is my dream that helps me to go out and to reach out to the world. I have a dream. Do you have a dream? You must have a dream, and un until you have a dream, much more bigger than your fears, much more bigger than your emotions, much more bigger than your, your doubts, then you don't have a dream. Your dream must be able to silence all your fears. Your dream must be able to silence all your doubts. Your dream must be able to silence everything. If God tells me it is done, believe it. Even if the situation does not show it, believe it. Even if crisis tells you otherwise, believe it, because there is nothing like believing, keep believing until something happens. Faith does not have limit to the amount of time you spend in prayer. Some people say, I prayed all day. Who told you to give yourself limit? Pray without ceasing. Pray until something happens. Pray until healing takes place. Pray until the victory is won. God didn't tell us that the battle was going to be easy. God didn't tell us that the battle was going to be few. Actually, the Bible tells me many are the afflictions. Which God is going to allow affliction to come to his children? It is my God and your God. Because God allows affliction to teach us wisdom. God allows affliction to teach us strength. Until you begin to flex your muscles in the gym of faith, you are going to be weak. God is not looking for weak, insignificant people. God is looking for people like Joshua, whose faith can ask the sun to stand still. God is looking for people like Moses, whose faith can part the Red Sea. God is looking for people like the Hebrew boys, who we say we will not bow in the fire of affliction. We never consume them. Reward is defined as something that is given in return for good or evil done. The problem I have with people who preach hyper grace is that while they tell you about everything good that God's going to do for you, they never tell you about the consequences of wrong conduct. That's a problem. The problem is not with the message of grace. The problem is with the manipulation of that same message. What we are today is the resultant effect of the seed that was sown yesterday. You can't plant unbelief all your life and expect good things. So your destiny is in your hands. Everything about your life is in your hands. Use faith as a weapon to win your battles. Use faith as a weapon to develop your nation. Use faith as a weapon to transform the Republic of the Philippines and all nations of the world. Even the people you think don't have faith, they have faith. The politician believes that the nation is not going to collapse. That's why despite corruption in different parts of the world, politicians continue to run because they have faith that someday the nation is going to be good. That's faith. You go to your, to your bed and, and you tell your friends that tomorrow we're going to see by so, 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 so time. You don't control your breath. You don't control how you sleep. That's faith. Now that you've seen how faith has taken you this far, Begin to extend that faith. Take the faith to the next level. God is not saying you should have the biggest faith in the world. He's just saying just have a bit of faith. Faith is consistently consistent. Anyone that has faith, even as small as the mustard seed, is going to have a tremendous harvest.
You want God to be real to you, be real to him. You can't be playing games with God and expect God to be real to you. If God is distant from you, it's because you're distant from God. If you don't know God or you think you can't hear God, it's because God can't even hear your praises and your prayers. Psalm 18 verse 25 tells me, To the faithful is going to show himself faithful. No wonder David made a profound statement and said, I was young, but now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, neither have I seen a seed back for bread. You can't be full of faith and have the wrong harvest. From the scripture we've just read, the Bible tells me, but without faith it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must know that God rewards diligence. Diligence simply means a kind of fanatical commitment to a cause. Being consistently consistent. That's what diligence means. Diligence simply means you're searching the scriptures. Your prayer life is okay. Your word study is okay. That's what diligence is. Diligence is not when you come to church today, the next time you come, it's going to be two, two, three years from now. That's not diligence. And you expect God to reward that. When was the last time you testified for God? That's not diligence. Diligence is not what you do sometimes. Diligence is what you do all the time. All the time. What is going to stop you from this crazy, chaotic world is faith. It is predicated on what we do not see, but what we believe. The Bible tells me in the book of Matthew chapter 25 verse 21, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of of your Lord. This is the way faith works. This is the way the reward system of God works. When a believer is faithful over little things, God causes him to rule over many things. You want to rule over your circumstances? Just be faithful with a few things that God's given to you. And watch him multiply your influence, multiply your faith, multiply your wealth, multiply everything you put your hands to do. The reward system of God multiplies small things and makes them big. The reward system of God multiplies small things and turns them into tremendous harvest. That is why God is always going to ask you to do something. And when God tells you, give me this, it's because he wants to multiply it. Invest into your faith and fight your fears. You cannot grow your faith by feeding your, your fears and fighting your faith. Fight your fears and feed your faith. Don't feed your doubt. Don't feed your unbelief. Don't feed your problems. Stand on the word of God. God's reward system was designed to help you grow from glory to glory. It is not something new. Because God works with the laws of causes and effects. For every cause, there is an effect. Galatians chapter 6 verse 7 tells me, Do not be deceived, for God is not mocked for whatever a man sows, so shall he reap. That's crazy preaching. Tragedy happens to a man who's been faithful. you will say, God has given and God has taken. Let's praise the Lord. My God does not reward faithfulness with evil. 
My God does not reward faithfulness with the calamities of sickness. My God does not reward faithfulness with premature death. You must learn how to fight. Because the Bible tells me, resist the devil and he will flee from you. I stand and I speak into your destiny. Everyone under demonic assault, don't say that is the will of God. I raise the standard of God's power over the situation. I raise the standard of the blood of Jesus. Every conspiracy against your destiny, every conspiracy against your life, every conspiracy against your purpose are commanded to be destroyed in the the name of Jesus. I release life. I release you into the life of God. I release you into the faith of God. I release you into the presence of God. I release you into the favor of God. Every strange battle in your life, I command it to cease in the name of Jesus. Be careful how you accept things. That's not the will of God. COVID-19 is not the will of God. All good and pleasant things comes from God. When you see disaster, fight it. John chapter 10 verse 10 tells me, what is the assignment of the evil one? Comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But there is a but, say, there is a but. Every problem you're going through in your life, there is a solution and it is called faith. Satan does not have the final word concerning your health. The devil does not have the final word concerning your business. The devil does not have the final word concerning your career. Yes, the devil is always going to attempt to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But there is always an antidote to the enemy's attack. The Bible tells me, but I came that you may have life and have it abundantly. May you have abundance of health, abundance of life, abundance of everything in the mighty name of Jesus. God does not subtract, God gives. It is the devil that tries to steal your joy, steal your peace, steal your happiness. But I came that everything the devil stole from you I declare a sevenfold restoration in the mighty name of Jesus I speak into families represented in this place joy is coming back to your home peace is coming back to your home life is coming back to your home I speak to the Republic of the Philippines I don't care what the doctors say I speak the word of God let the breath of God move to Mindanao Luzon the desires. Philippines arise and shine. Let healing take place right now. Let that stop. Let COVID stop. Receive life. Receive life. Receive life. Receive life in the name of Jesus. I speak into the dry bones of adversity. Ah, that bone, those bones are coming back to life. I prophesy by the breath of God and I speak. Let dry bones come back to life. God did not call us to complain. He called us to speak. If you have nothing good to say about this nation, shut up. If you curse this nation, you're going to be cursed. If you have nothing good to say about this country, just shut up. Bless. Hallelujah. The principle of reward was designed by God to promote love, righteousness, faith, justice, order, and good moral behavior. When you reject it, it becomes detrimental to your purpose. Hebrews 4, 1 to 3 tells me, Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, tell your neighbor, say, I have the promise. I don't care how long I have been fighting my battle, but one day I am going to enter my political rest, my economic rest, my academic rest, my marital rest. Keep fighting because God does not lie. And the Bible tells me by two immutable words, it is impossible for God to lie. He gave David rest and he's going to give you rest. He gave Elijah rest, he's going to give you rest. He gave the apostles rest and he's going to give you rest. And the Bible tells me is a stand still and watch God make your enemies your foods too 
David was a man of battle. But the Bible tells me that, and God gave David rest from all sides. I prophesy that the spirit of rest is coming upon you, coming upon your business, coming upon your career, coming upon your home, coming upon this nation. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. Therefore, since the promise remains of entering his rest, let us feel lest any of you seem to have come short of it. For indeed, the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. For we who have believed do enter that rest, as he has said. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. Everything God wants you to do and become, he has already finished it. He's already finished it. You are asking God, do something new in my life. And God is saying, I have already done everything. The Bible did not say God is going to give us everything that pertains to life and godliness. It said God has given us. Say giving. <laughs> you need to know the difference between past and present. The past is what is gone. The present is what is. And the future is what is to come. The Bible did not say God is going to heal us. The Bible tells me God for our diseases. He took away our transgression. By his stripes, we have been made whole. Why are you asking God to give you healing when you already have healing? But someone is going to say, I don't feel healed. You don't need to feel it. You need to take it. You need to press into your healing. We do not come to ask God to give us life because he's already given us life. He's already given us promotion. He's already given us fame. But all we need to do is to believe and to seize it and to confess it and to take it and to step into that rest. Labor in prayer to step into your rest. Labor in praise to step into your rest. Labor in words to step into your rest. I declare that someone under the influence of the sound of my voice, you are stepping into your rest in the name of Jesus. You are stepping into your rest in the name of Jesus. Jesus, receive your healing, receive your promotion, receive your victory. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. Everything that God has given you is already in the spirit realm. Take it. When I pray, I'm simply taking what is mine. Healing is the children's bread. And we children of the kingdom. He said, all that my father has, they are, they are what? They are yours. What does it mean to be an heir? An heir is someone who inherits what you have. And now some of, some of you are saying, but my battles are too many. My battles are too many. Jesus, who fought all the battle, was just a conqueror. But because we inherited the victory, he made us more than conquerors. The conqueror is the one that fights. The more than conqueror is the one that inherits. Because Jesus fought the battle and he said it is finished to sickness. It is finished to pain. It is finished to fear. It is finished to heartbreak. It is finished to unbelief. I declare it is finished to fear in your life. It is finished to failure. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. When you read the word of God, you are laboring to enter that rest. When you pray, you are laboring to enter that rest. You see the difference between Unbelievers and believers, unbelievers fight for what they don't even know. Believers fight for what is already known. Hallelujah. Even before the battle started, he made us victorious. He began the beginning before the beginning began and started. The start before the start even got started. 
He made us modern conquerors. Hebrews 4, 6 to 7. Since therefore it remains that some must enter it, and those to whom it was first preached did not enter because of disobedience again, he designates a certain day, saying, In David today, after such a long time, as it has been said, Today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Take what belongs to you. But for you to enter that rest, you need to make some quality choices. You need to make up your mind whether you want to spend your entire life complaining or proclaiming. You need to make up your mind whether you are going to spend your entire life running from your destiny or running into your destiny. You need to make up your mind whether you are going to keep whining or keep winning. It is up to you. There are radical choices to be made. You need to make up your mind whether you're going to spend your entire Sundays just having pleasure meetings or coming to God's presence and giving him praise. The choices you make will determine how fast the victory is going to be won and how far you're going to go. Choices. When Moses was given a choice of having temporary pleasure and facing eternal damnation, this is what the Bible tells me in the book of Hebrews 11:26, esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he looked to the reward. You know, every time we make choices, we ain't stupid. You see the pleasure. You see the compromise. You see the potential for temporary pleasure. But whatever choice you make is going to have not just an impact on your destiny, but on the destiny of the people to come tomorrow. I am making the hard choices because I know that a generation of apostolic, prophetic, mighty men and women will rise up from the Republic of the Philippines. That is why I'm preaching. I am making the choices because I know that someday this nation is going to be one of the most treasured nation in the world because you have called upon the name of Jesus. I am making the hard choices. It is not easy. It is not sweet. It is painful, but the seed of discipline is always painful, but the fruit of discipline is a great gain. I prophesy that someone under the influence of the sound of my voice, because you are a soldier in Christ, don't be afraid of making the hard choices today. To the lawyer, don't be afraid of making the hard choices today. Today. to the politician don't be afraid of making the hard choices today to the businessman don't be afraid of making the hard choices today some people may criticize it what people don't understand they always criticize but someday in the halls of fame they will call your name and glorify Jesus stand up for what is right stand up for what is good stand up for what is godly and make the right choices because the destiny of the next generation is waiting for you. People from different parts of the world, they're waiting for you. Americans are waiting. Britons are waiting. Africans are waiting. Different parts of the world, they're waiting for the things you do and say. The Bible tells me that the entire creation cries for the manifestation of the sons of God. I prophesy that there is an uprising of righteousness. There is an uprising of revival. There is an uprising for radical change. The change is coming change is coming to Asia change is coming to Africa change is coming to Europe change is coming to Australia change is coming to different parts of the world change is going to Antarctica the Bible tells me those who know the God shall be strong and they shall do great exploits receive the spirit of faith receive the spirit of righteousness receive the spirit of power receive the spirit of holiness touch two three people give them a high five. Say, I am stepping into power. I am stepping into glory. I am stepping into power. I am stepping into victory. Let the devils come. Let the demons gather. But victory belongs to the righteous. Victory belongs to you. Victory belongs to your family. Victory belongs to your friends. If you believe that, shout hallelujah.
The Bible tells me in the book of Genesis chapter 15 verse 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision saying, Do not be afraid. Abraham, I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward. Anytime God sends his prophetic word, anytime God sends his message, it's not to scare you. It's to tell you that reward is coming. Gain is coming. Hope is coming. Power is coming. Ruth chapter 2 verse 12. The Lord repay your work and a full reward be given you by the Lord God of Israel. Under whose wings you have come for refuge. Everyone under the influence of the sound of my voice. All those who made God their refuge. Reward is coming. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. Colossians 3, 23 to 24. And whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord God. You see, service is not easy. There is nothing as painful as leadership. Because sometimes, even when you're making the right decision, the people are going to say, who made you a judge over us? But the Bible tells me that, and in whatever you do, don't do it complaining. There are leaders in this place. You've done so much for your people, your district, and your nation, and your province, and your state. And they still say bad things about you. Is okay. You ain't greater than Jesus. Jesus was sinless. Jesus was perfect. But not everyone appreciated him. Don't say because they, they, no one appreciates me, I'm going to quit. Don't quit. You know, some of these artworks you see today, the people who did those artworks, Da Vinci and the rest, and the rest, they died without even seeing how, how powerful the work of the arts. Today, they're being celebrated. Sometimes the things we do, we may see the immediate reward. But sometimes it's our children's children. So whatever you're doing, don't complain. Do it unto God. And whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men. Knowing that from the Lord you receive the reward of the inheritance. For you serve Lord Christ. Romans chapter 2, verse 6 to 8. Who we render to each one according to his deeds, eternal life to those who by patient continuance in doing good seek for glory, honor, and immortality. But to those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath. Everything you do we have reward, but don't have the wrong ones. May you have your eternal reward in Jesus' name. We are going to be rewarded here on earth. And also, we are going to be rewarded in eternity too. So it's both ways. Any believer that tells you that I only get my reward when I get there. <laughs> Something is wrong with that doctrine. You know, Peter told Jesus... He said, we have left all. I stopped being a fisherman. I stopped being a businessman to follow you. What will I receive? I like people like Peter. I don't want to pretend about my faith. Now, do you want me to tell you the best stock business in town? Well, I'm not promoting the New York Stock Exchange. I'm promoting God's Kingdom Stock Exchange. The more you give to God, the more harvest. <laughs> there are no losses. You know, one time in my country, when the country had the fastest growing economy in the world, people told us to buy stock, all the savings I had. <laughs> I was just buying and buying, buying all the stock, buying all the stock, buying all. Then suddenly, oops, boom. And all those stocks I bought became worthless paper. The papers are still there. Hallelujah. That is what 
the world's talk can do to you. But I'm not saying because Bishop Tony said that some of you are going to say, Bishop said we shouldn't invest. That's not what I'm saying. Invest wisely. But to solidify your earthly investment, also invest in the things of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Galatians 6, 9. And let us not grow weary while doing good. Say, don't be weary. And let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season, we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Hallelujah. Don't lose heart. You are almost done with the race. Keep running because you are going to win. I declare, every one of you was given to the things of the kingdom. Sacrificially, I declare that before this year ends, let your harvest come in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive the harvest of life. Receive the harvest of health. Receive the harvest of wealth. Receive the harvest of power. Receive all year harvest in the mighty name of Jesus. God does not reward godliness and obedience with evil calamities. This happens as a result of demonic attacks or when our faith is tested. But you have the power to allow adversity to make or break you. The Bible tells me in the book of James chapter 1 verse 12 to 14. Blessed is the man who endures temptation. Say endure. Endure temptations. Endure trials. It's going to be for your own good. Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say, when he's tempted, I'm tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he's drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Genesis 22 verse 1. Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. Now, someone is going to say, but well, this is a contradiction. Say God does not tempt people. Yes, but he tests people. When God is testing you, it is because he wants to approve you. It is the devil that tempts you to derail you. God does not tempt, but he tests to approve you and promote you and empower you more. Have you noticed that when Jesus was tempted by the devil and he passed all his temptation, angels came to minister to him. I prophesy that every one of you, when you have been tested by God, you shall be approved and you shall be promoted in the mighty name of Jesus. James 1, 2-4. My brethren, count it all joy. Say all joy. Say all joy. When you fall into various trials. Say why? Say why? My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Hallelujah. I was not always a patient person. I was the most impatient man you can think of. But when God sent me to the Philippines, I learned patience. Sometimes you want people to do this thing. They'll do it over and over. I stopped saying, I I stopped it. I said, God, give me grace. And I also moved from suffering to long suffering. You know, long suffering is suffering for somebody's stupidity, somebody's disobedience, somebody who has been maculate. You're suffering because of that. Don't complain. At the end of it all, you know, the rascality of some people here in different parts of the world helped me to understand my own impatience. I thought I was a holy man 
But I didn't know that I was impatient. But when I began to see the things they were doing, oh, I said, God, give me patience. I, I na ko, Lord, give me patience. And, you know, with time, God began to teach me, teach me patience. I cannot say I'm perfect, but I'm enjoying God's patience. Because sometimes in God's patience, and you just watch people doing foolish things, and you're wondering, instead of getting angry, sometimes you begin to laugh. And you're wondering why someone just can't see the truth. May God grant you patience in the mighty name of Jesus. If God can reward your faith, he can also punish your disobedience. Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 33. You shall walk in all the ways which the Lord your God has commanded you, that you may live and that it may be well with you, and that you may prolong your days in the land which you shall possess. So if you want to live well, and possess the land. Always obey God. It's never good to bet against God. Proverbs 22, 4. But humility and the fear of the Lord are riches, honor, and life. So what are the dividends of humility and the fear of God? Riches, honor, and life. I declare that by, to, by the mystery of the word of God, you will have riches, you will have honor, and you will have life. Proverbs eleven eighteen. The wicked man does deceptive work, but he who sows righteousness will have a sure reward. You will have your reward in the mighty name of Jesus. First Peter 5, 6. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, and he may exalt you in due time. Don't attempt to exalt yourself before your time. Because... He makes all things beautiful in his own time. Then in conclusion, Romans 6, 23. Why are some people dying before their time? Why are there so many calamities? It is simple. Sin is always a culprit. The Bible tells me in the book of Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. In other words, everything you do can produce consequences. Those who sow into life will reap life. And those who sow into death will reap death. Seek good so that you can live. I want you to stand to your feet. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift your sons and daughters before you. I declare that by the Spirit of God, because they have called upon you, because they have sown righteousness, because they have sown peace, because they have sown order, because they have sown love, let them reap a harvest of everything good and godly. Let them reap a harvest of life. Let them reap a harvest of goodness, of mercy, of long life, of peace, of wealth of influence, of power. Everything that God has not planted in your life, I cancel it and I declare that there shall be no negative reward. And for those watching me online, and you say, my life has been used inappropriately with God. Nothing is impossible. You can right every wrong today by saying this, Lord Jesus, I know you're the son of God. You died to set me free. Today I come before you, I believe the gospel with my heart and with my mouth, I confess unto righteousness. Forgive me of my sins, cleanse me from all unrighteousness, come into my life and become my personal Lord and Savior. If you just pray that prayer, welcome to the family of God. I don't know where you are watching from, but if you are in Metro Manila, you can contact us from the address on the screen below. And if you are in different parts of the world, we have team in the U.S., team Japan, team Nigeria, team Kenya, team Uganda, team Pakistan, and other parts of the world. But if you are in a nation where there are no team churches, 
There are also good Bible-believing churches there. Contact some of them and fellowship with them. And the God of all peace, we grant you peace and reward you in all things. God bless you. Good day, everyone. My name is Jasmine Henry. My life has been transformed positively and continuously by Tony Mario Heist messages. You should definitely check it out and make sure to subscribe to his channel.